Beck, our first guest uh, this hour is reopening beaches in the hard-hit Garden State just in time for Memorial Day weekend. Let's welcome New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy. Governor, welcome. You, you getting any sleep? <laughs> I am, Joe. Good to be back with you. It's good to see you also. Uh, bring us up to date, up to speed on uh, what stage we're in right now and, and, and whether we're the, the Garden State where I live as well. Uh, is it really the right time in terms of all the, the statistics? Are we, are, are we within all the guidelines in terms of... Uh, yeah. We are. Okay, go ahead, Governor. Joe, I think we are, but this is a delicate balance without question. First of all, we've lost over 10,700 blessed lives, which is almost unfathomable. It is unfathomable. Uh, having said that, hospitalizations, new hospitalizations, ICU beds, ventilator use, all the things that we track have been going in the right direction now for more than a couple of weeks. And so we've begun to take what I would call baby steps. Admittedly, beaches is a big step uh, in that list, but we've had a bias toward opening things up first that are outdoors and loosening that. So for instance, parks, county and state parks, we did a few weekends ago. Beaches, as I mentioned, curbside pickup earlier this week for non-essential retail. Uh, we've opened up construction more. Again, a bias toward the outside because that's where the virus can can uh, do less damage. Uh, but to, this weekend's a big one with beaches. Governor, have you ever seen anything like this? And, and I, I know what kind of world we're living in right now. This is the Post uh, today. I'm just going to hold it up for a second. Uh, I mean, a, a major news, I don't know, is the Post a major newspaper? It needs to end now. And, and I could look at the Daily News and I could find a cover that says, are you out of your minds to even consider stepping out of your house? So it, it and you look at the polls and it's like so weird. It's like 90 percent of Republicans say one thing and 90 percent of Democrats say the opposite. I, how do you yeah. how do you walk the line? You, you've got an economy in New Jersey that you want to you know, you want people to go back to work, but we don't want anyone to die. It's so weird to watch, yeah. Governor. It, listen, I'm not uh, I, I, I'm in violent agreement. This is something unlike we've ever seen before. We, we do have a pretty uh, uh, clear eyed focus on a couple of different guiding principles. First of all, data, we're, we're as money ball as we can be. And we say all the time that data determines dates and then more broadly, public health creates economic health. So we chose to rip the Band-Aid off the economy, which has been extraordinary pain, extraordinarily painful for uh, job loss, for small businesses, for many of our sectors. But the alternative was to let the virus go, or in this case, open up too early, in which case I think it's throwing gasoline on the fire, not just in the public health piece of this, but you also have a much deeper hole ultimately economically. So as, as much as the, I want to open up as much as anybody, but trust me, I want, want to get folks back to work as fast as possible, uh, get small businesses back up on their feet. But if we screw up the public health piece, none of that'll happen. And that's really the, the, the side that we need to err on. There's so many different uh, conflicting wins on, on how to go. We want herd immunity. We initially, wanted to make sure we had enough ventilators and that the healthcare system wasn't overrun. It, but it was never stipulated right at the beginning that no one would ever catch the virus again, because that's impossible. And, and it wasn't that we were going to stay inside till we absolutely get a, a vaccine that works. So what, what changed? What, what, do, what are we trying to do? I mean, it, it, that's why people want to, the, the vulnerable population, you want to try to uh, sequester those people and maybe the people that are, are going to get through it okay are able to go back to work. Are you thinking about, you must be thinking about that all the time, how to do that. All, all, all the time, Joe. And, and, and one of the big pieces that's important to note is we need the right infrastructure in place, not just for us to be confident, but more importantly, for the 9 million New Jerseyans to be confident that they can begin to dip their toe back in the water. And, and big pieces of that are number one, we've ramped up testing. That's a dramatically different reality than even the last time I was on with you. We're now gonna be able to, by the end of next week, we'll be doing over 20,000 tests a day in the state. Secondly, contact tracing between a, an amped up body of folks who are getting on the phone and, and, and speaking to people along with, with technology. Those are two realities that we have in the state today that, 
that no state had when this whole thing started. That's intended to give folks the confidence that, you know what, if we, if we see a flare-up, we could spot it quickly. We've got a plan in place to isolate that. Uh, and so that gives folks the confidence they can get back out there on the boardwalk, get to the park, do other things that I hope will be able to open up over the next several weeks. Becky. Governor, that was kind of my question, too. You answered part of it. But we've been speaking with Scott Gottlieb every day, the, the head of the, the former head of the FDA. His concern I love him. Jersey is guy, by the way. Will, yeah, yeah. And his concern is that things are going to die down uh, in July and August. That's the good news. But his concern is it will come back in the fall, kind of like H1N1 has in the past. Yep. He's concerned that we won't be ready for that, that we won't track it quickly enough. Um, how, how, how do we do that? Where are all these testing places going to be? His concern was that it wouldn't be done in doctor's offices. There would be some simply coronavirus testing places that you had to go to, and he doesn't think that's enough. And the contact tracing that you mentioned, I live in New Jersey, too, and I, I don't know anything about that yet. By the way, we, we got, you got a lot of Jersey blood in the show, which is another reason I love coming on this. <laughs> yeah. uh, listen, I, uh, Scott's, Scott's a, a rock star, and, and he's a guy we look to and speak to, uh, and, and, and you hear that from him and you hear it from other experts that this thing could come back in mm. uh, uh, in the fall with a vengeance, which is why on our sort of six-stop road to recovery, the sixth point is resiliency. Uh, and, and by that, we mean really two things. One is this virus is has torn open uh, in full public view awful inequities, particularly along racial lines in our society. And secondly, to your question, Becky, it's resiliency in making sure we've got the bed capacity, ventilator capacity, PPE, healthcare, uh, bullpen help, uh, the medicines, et cetera, that we didn't have either as a nation or certainly in our state when this started, that we've got that in, in our stockpile, if you will, uh, in, in anticipation of, ho God willing, I hope it doesn't happen, but if we get that second wave, and that's another area that we're focused laser-like on right now. I mean, great news to, to have a lot of the things prepared that we didn't in the past, hospital beds, PPE. But, I, I mean, I'm thinking of this as a parent, and if I send my kids back to school in the fall, I want to know immediately if there's an outbreak somewhere so that I know how to protect my family, particularly if I have any vulnerable members of my family. How, how can you yeah. make sure we know that quickly and immediately? Yeah, well, testing is a big part of that, and, and we've scaled it up and we'll continue to scale it up. Uh, just a couple of examples to Scott's point. Rite Aid, we just announced a couple of days ago, is going to have 50 locations testing uh, by the end of next week. Walmart's going to have seven of their big superstores doing drive-through testing uh, by tomorrow. Uh, so every day, it seems, we announce a new expansion of this. And that's going to have to include, listen, we, we had a, we've, we've established a group of wise women and men to advise us in the three big tough nuts that we've got to give people confidence uh, on sooner than later are daycare, uh, schools, public transportation. And, and you, you just said something, as a mom, I'm a dad. I mean, you've got to have confidence that you've got the testing, uh, the quick, rapid turnaround ability to track that down, the contact tracing. You've got a plan in place to isolate any hot spots should they come up. And people have to believe that. And that's what we're focused on. Governor, can you speak a little bit about the conversations you've had with the teachers unions in your state and what you anticipate doing with teachers that either have uh, pre-existing conditions, comorbidities, or uh, are, are of, of an age. And by the way, some of the most legendary, greatest teachers uh, in your state and around this country um, happen to have been in the business for a long time. So they're, they're older. And for them to yep. actually go to school and to work creates certain challenges, as you know. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a, a, a crisp, easy-to-speak to answer on this. That's probably the most complicated part about back to school. So we've been virtual. We'll continue that through the end of this school year. We're trying to find a way. I hope we'll have some news in this uh, by tomorrow to allow folks to celebrate uh, responsibly their graduation. Um, we, we talk about several lives every day in our press conference of people we've lost. Invariably, Joe, there's a teacher in there, uh, and it's somebody, as you suggest, who's been, who was at it for like 50 or 60 years. Uh, the, the unions have been fabulous. Uh, we have the number one public education system in America, uh, and we want to keep it that way. Uh, but we've got to find a way, I think, re responsibly, uh, not just for the moms and dads, as to Becky's point, that you could have kids back together in some 
responsible social distancing way, but that you're protecting uh, genera- cr- the cross-generational uh, aspect of this virus. I don't have a crisp answer for you, but I suspect it's a lot of social distancing, uh, uh, probably a decent dose of virtual learning uh, and a whole lot of testing uh, on a regular basis going on. I would bet those are the ingredients. Governor, um, be nice if some small businesses were, were deemed essential, I guess. That's a problem. And, and I, I'm not necessarily just talking about hair salons, but can, can you give me any idea uh, when I'm going to be able to, to maybe do that? Or what about an indoor restaurant with, uh, with some separation and, and some masks with, with all the staff? Yep. What, what's the date for those types of things? I don't have a date, but I would hope it is a matter of weeks. If we keep seeing the, the curves and the progress that we've seen, uh, and we got to make sure that's the most important piece of this, uh, we'll, we've already started this now for several weeks. We've, we've done this sort of in, uh, iterative steps. Outside's easier than inside, so the toughest nuts to crack are inside, no ventilation, sedentary. Uh, and so that means indoor dining is going to be more complicated uh, than outdoor dining. Uh, the, the barbershop, which all of us need, uh, the, the, the salon, uh, the gym, uh, th- those are complicated. I, I am hopeful that with the progress we've been making, uh, that, that that's a matter of weeks. We do have non-essential retail allowing curbside pickup as of this uh, past Monday. Uh, I hope we'll continue to see progress on that front. And as I say, I, I would point to to a matter of weeks, uh, hopefully, when we get some of that stuff open.